Hi, this is Graham Mossman from Exosol, and today I'm going to tell you about the new Skyline feature for preference analytics that we've introduced with version 5 of our Exosolution database. This allows you to attack a class of problems that were not previously considered suitable for SQL databases. It comes from a collaboration between Exosol's R&D department and teams of university researchers, and as a result, we are the first database vendor to introduce this feature. Because it is so new and quite different, I wanted to make this short video to explain what Skyline is and why you should care about it. In a future video, I will walk through a practical demo using ExaSolution, but in order to keep this video short, I will concentrate here on describing the basic concepts involved. Skyline is not intended for the usual kind of BI problem, which has only one correct answer, and you just need to write some SQL to find it. Skyline helps you in situations where you need to make a choice from a large number of alternatives, all of which have their advantages and disadvantages, and as a result there is no one definitive way of deciding which one of them is best. Skyline doesn't make any final choice for you, it says it filters the number of choices down to a short list of candidates that are worth investigating further. Here's the kind of choice I'm talking about. Imagine I want to choose the best car from these three choices. I like the speed of the Lamborghini, but it is rather expensive. The off-road vehicle is cheaper, but pretty slow. The Aerial Atom is the cheapest and has great acceleration, but it really isn't as fast or as powerful as the Lamborghini. Every choice has advantages and disadvantages. If you did a survey of a thousand people, it's unlikely they would all make the same choice because after all, there is no one correct answer. It depends on whether the individual prefers speed over price and whether power is at all important to them. Here is a more realistic example. There are a lot of investment funds that you could choose to invest in. All of them have advantages and disadvantages, but in this diagram I have chosen to care only about their volatility, which is a measure of risk, and their average return, which is a measure of potential reward. In reality I would consider a number of other factors, but it is hard to represent a 20-dimensional graph on PowerPoint. We like high reward and we hate high risk. If there existed a fund that had the lowest risk and also the highest reward, then our choice would be obvious and we wouldn't need Skyline. However, in the real world, all funds offer a mixture of risk and reward, and your choice will depend on how much risk you're prepared to take. One thing's for sure though, if you have two funds and one gives you a higher reward than the other for the same or lower risk, then there's no point considering the lower yielding fund. This is the principle of Skyline. If we eliminate all the funds where there exists another fund that has a better risk and better potential reward, then we can create a more manageable short list of funds that are worth investigating in more detail. In our example here, we're left with the set of green dots on the Skyline of the graph. These funds are optimal in terms purely of risk and reward. It would then be a matter for you to make your choice from this short list based on your personal attitude to risk and perhaps also using a more detailed investigation of the other features of the shortlisted funds. Some problems of choice are a lot less pure mathematical than investment analysis. Imagine we are choosing the site of a new airport for London and we would like a location that affects the minimum number of people but we would also like it to be close to the centre of London. Here again we have the usual problems of choice. Locations close to the centre of the city tend to be highly populated and thinly populated areas tend to be a long way out. So imagine we create a skyline set of locations that gives us the best distance versus population trade-off. And then imagine that our skyline shortlist includes this location, Buckingham Palace and the surrounding gardens. This is a very central location and as you can see it is not densely populated. According to our stated preferences this could be a good candidate for our shortlist. Obviously though we know this would not be a serious option. What we have here isn't an example of a bug in the skyline process. Instead it has taught us something useful. We've learned that Blindly applying a model that only values distance and population, in this case produces some answers that appear illogical, and so maybe we should factor some other variables into our analysis. Or maybe it would be useful to investigate even these obviously wrong alternatives in more detail. 
This indicates how Skyline can be part of an iterative and therefore very human process for drawing up a short list of alternatives. You decide a set of preferences, you look at the resulting shortlist, and then maybe you change the preferences in the light of experience and repeat the process as often as you need to. This is a very powerful method for solving a wide range of problems of choice. Here is a slightly different example. Imagine we have visitors on our website and we want to sell them one of our excellent products. How do we decide which product to offer to a particular visitor? An interesting approach would be to use everything we know about our visitor to build a skyline set of products that may be of interest to that visitor. Here we need to make the decision immediately and without human intervention, so we could randomly offer them a product from the skyline set. All of the products in this set are guaranteed to be in some way suitable for that visitor and there is a decent chance that it would actually turn out to be the most suitable for that visitor. A nice bonus is that if the same visitor returned to the website, they would not be automatically offered the same product as they were offered and rejected last time. This approach is far more likely to lead to a sale than one offering a random product from the full product list or by only using a single fact about the visitor to make a decision. Here's how we have implemented Skyline to work with our database. We have added an additional clause to the usual SQL statement so that as well as specifying where and having, you can optionally also use preferring to select only the Skyline set of values. The preferring clause mentioned here contains the partition by statement, which means that you will get a different Skyline set for every possible start day rather than one set for all start days. There is a rich set of optional parameters such as partition by that you can use with the preferring clause and I would invite you to check out the full details in the ExaSolution version 5 user's guide. Finally, here's a reminder that Skyline is just the latest addition to our overall ExaSolution offering which has at its core a high performance database engine that can be applied to a growing range of data analysis techniques and that range now includes the kind of preference analytics that I've described in this video. If you would like further details about Skyline or Exasol version 5, then you are very welcome to check out our website, exasol.com, which has full details of how you can contact us. Thank you for your time today. I hope it's been useful and that you'll be inspired to take a closer look at what Exasol can do for your business.